Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going over the 7 segment display and the circuitry behind it as well as, you know, how it works. So, right now the, red, uh, the encoders are set at zero. Uh, this is the increase button, this is the decrease button, and they're on timers so you can just one click it. So, as you can see, it goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, all the way up to 9. There we go, and it can go down to 1, and then 0 is blank. 0 is blank due to the limitations of the strategy I used. Um, I'll be going into that in a moment. Now, the most basic part of the circuit is the 7 segment display itself. For each segment of the display, it has an input, which I've linked to these OR switches in the back. They're just there to mark it so that I can um, organize my OR switches over here. Because every single number needs to have an input. To as many switches as it needs. So I've just expanded them into a lot of OR switches so that any input can be handled no matter what. And these inputs have pass throughs so you can actually make them as long as you want which is very nice. Um, but going over to here to the start we have our power system. It's just distributing power to all these timers. Right now it's set at zero so every single one of these um, counters are set at zero. Now when I set it to one Every single counter is set to 1. Now these are split and given over to here. Um, these, this little circuit at the top here is XOR switches, so only one input to be considered true. And for every, it's inspired by a red coder circuit that um, is commonly used in Minecraft. So we now have this one checking number two, this one checking number two and number one, and because number two and number one are active, it's disabled. And number two and number three have different states, so it's enabled. Um, and then that will continue to eliminate past ones, activate the present ones, and not matter about the future ones. So, the output of this XOR switch goes down to the splitter, goes more splitters, and then goes to every single, um, every single segment that it needs to activate. In this case, it's the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. The, um, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. I, I numbered them to make it easier, but it's um, you don't need to do that. So this thing can be expanded quite a bit. You can just basically add add more of them. Uh, the only problem is activating and taking outputs from these guys. Uh, you can have less of these guys, but you need one of them per every single um, every single encoder variation that you want. For instance, I'm just seeing one through nine. So I have 9. Um, in the case of 0, it's blank because all of these are ignored. Which I think is fine. It's not a big deal. But that's how it works. I'll go over the activations next. Now, the wonderful thing about this system is that you can activate it for, for really any function of the timer. Um, if I can set, select it here, you can have a clear counter function, you can have a decrement function, and an increment function. As long as it's applied to every single one of these at the same time, it can be used. So I could hook up a splitter like this to have nine outputs and go to the clear function. Whenever I send power through it, it'll just clear every single one, which will have the same effect on the seven segment display. So it's a very flexible system, although we can't use zero, and I am yet to find out a solution for that. But thank you all for taking this short peek. Catch you later.